All right then, so in the last video, I said that I wanted to give you a quick preview as to what a GraphQL query looks like when we're querying a GraphQL server. So to do that, we'll be using this tool right here called Graphical, which is a dummy front-end application which we can use to test our queries to a GraphQL server. Now, we're not going to go into too much depth about this tool right here. We'll be learning more about it as we go through the series. We're just going to use it so that you can get a feel of how these queries from the front end look. All right. Now, for the sake of this video, I've already set up an Express app and a GraphQL server on the back end. We're not going to look at that at all. We're only going to be concerned with what's going on on the front end when we're making queries to a GraphQL server. We'll set up all of this from scratch, starting in probably the next video. So for now, just focus on the front end. All right then, so this is graphical. And notice, I'm not on some website here where this is being served up. I'm on localhost. I'm serving this up myself from my Express server, and we'll see how to do that later on. But for now, let's just use this tool to create a simple query so you can see what they look like from the front end. So I want to query all books. I want to receive back a list of books from the GraphQL server. So the first thing we need to do to create a query is open up some curly braces. Then inside, we want to say what we want to query. What is our initial jumping in point? We're going to choose books. OK, now, what do we want from each book? Well, I want the name of the book. I also want the genre of that book. And I also want the ID property of that book as well. So this is the whole query right here. Very, very simple. We're saying we want to jump in at the books entry point, the root query of books. Then we want these three properties from those books. So if I press play now, it's going to make this query to the GraphQL server and it's going to come back with this data property right here. Inside the data, we have this books property, which is an array. You can see that from the square bracket. And each object inside that array represents a book. It has a name, genre, and ID. So we've got all of these three properties back from the GraphQL server. How simple was that? Okay, so the good thing about GraphQL is that I don't have to return all of this information, only the information that I want. So I could get rid of this ID property right here, press play again, and now I just get back the name and genre. So GraphQL is not bloating up the data that's returned to us. I'm only getting back what I request, which is unbelievably cool. Now, another great thing about GraphQL is that inside the same query, we can request relational data. We don't have to make an additional query. We can just nest that inside here. So say, for example, I want the author of this book or each book rather, then I'd say, OK, I'm going to nest the author query as well inside here. And from each author, I want to get back the name of the author, the age of the author. And that will do, in fact. So if I press play now, we're going to get the books. And then down here, we see we have this property author in each book. And that opens up a new object because it's a relational data type, it's not stored inside the book. So it's given us back another object for that, where we have the name and the age of the author for each one of them. OK, so that is really cool. This is how simple it is to make requests from the front end using GraphQL. Now, I just want to open up my dev tools by pressing F12. And I've gone to network right here just so you can see these requests being made. So. We see nothing at the minute, but if I press play again, then we're going to see this request right here. So if we open it up and inside headers, if you scroll right to the bottom, you're going to see the request payload. So you can see right here, this query property is just what looks like a string. There's nothing overly special about that string. The special part happens when the GraphQL server receives that string and it can pass it so that it understands that string and knows what data to return, how to walk the graph, how to grab the information that we've requested, and then how to return it to us in the client, in the browser. So it's all very simple from the front end. Now, just one more thing. You might be fooled into thinking this looks an awful lot like JavaScript. Well, it does, but it's not. It is not JavaScript. It is a query language and they're two different things. And that point is going to become more important when we start to flesh out the front end and start making requests. Speaking of that, I just want to show you a quick preview of the front end in the code. So if I open this, 
we can see we have our React app here. And this right here, my friends, is a query from the front end. So just like we saw the query in Graphical there, we're making the same kind of query from the front end. Very, very simple. We have all these different queries here, and we're going to request them at different points in our application. And yeah, they do get more complex as we go along like this one, which is a mutation, or this one right here where we're requesting a specific book. But we're going to learn how to do all of that as we go along. And I promise you, it really doesn't get much more complex than this. So there we go. That's how GraphQL looks from the front end and how we can make queries. In the next video, we're going to go straight ahead and dive into creating our Express app so we can start making our GraphQL server on Node.